John F. Kennedy was the 35th President of the United States of America. He did many great things during his time as President, and resolving the Cuban Missile Crisis was one of the greatest points in his term. John F. Kennedy was born in Brooklyn, Massachusetts on May 29, 1917. JFK went to Harvard, served during World War II, and became a congressman in 1946. In 1952, he became a senator, and in 1960, he won the presidential election. JFK became president during a time of political and military tension, the Cold War. It was a war without fighting between the world's superpowers. In one corner of the standoff was the United States and its NATO allies, with the USSR and its satellite countries in the other. It was a massive arms race, each side trying to develop the biggest metaphorical stick. The superpowers could have gone to war with each other at a few points in time, and the Cuban Missile Crisis was one of them. The Cuban Missile Crisis was a 13-day military and political standoff between the United States and the Soviet Union. It all started on October 14, 1962. An American U-2 spy plane spotted Soviet medium-range ballistic missile placements 90 miles away from the American coastline. Cuba was already wary of the United States, and the USSR seized its opportunity. By the 16th, President Kennedy was briefed on the situation and gathered a group of advisors. The group formed was called the Executive Committee or XCOM for short. For nearly two weeks, XCOM struggled with the diplomatic issues of the incident. It was an extremely delicate situation. The solutions were dicey. Invade Cuba and destroy the missiles while risking World War III, or wait for the Soviets to make the first move. There was an invasion force prepared for the proposed solutions, but JFK decided on a more peaceful solution. JFK took a valuable lesson from the failed Bay of Pigs. He decided to trust diplomacy and use the information his military advisors had given him. JFK decided to use a naval blockade to prevent the U Soviet Union from sending any more missiles or supplies to Cuba, effectively cutting off the USSR's access to Cuba. The blockade successfully redirected Soviet frigates without any major conflict. The standoff at sea could have caused war if the Soviet ships tried to breach the blockade, but fortunately, the ships stopped. After this display of force, Kennedy and Khrushchev exchanged letters discussing the terms of the missiles. The following agreement was reached. The missiles in Cuba would be removed with a promise that America would not invade Cuba. Also, some American missile batteries in Turkey that could strike the USSR would be removed. This solution reached on October 28, 1962, marked the success of Kennedy's diplomatic solution to the Cuban Missile Crisis. The 13-day standoff was over, but the Cold War was not. One year later, JFK took the first steps to end the Cold The Limited Nuclear Test Ban Treaty was a treaty between the world superpowers at the time that possessed nuclear capabilities. The USSR, the UK, Canada, France, and the United States. Negotiation talks began in 1955, when the United Nations Disarmament Commission gathered countries with nuclear capabilities with an attempt to ban nuclear weapons testing. JFK strongly believed a nuclear test ban would prevent nuclear weapons to be developed by other countries. Nuclear testing was an issue in his 1960 presidential campaign, and once elected, he pledged not to test any more nuclear weapons. One reason negotiations took a long time was because of their differences. As the Soviets began to resume atmospheric testing, JFK was pressured to resume testing of their own. He was unsuccessful in his endeavors to reach an agreement with the USSR and reluctantly resumed testing of nuclear weapons. After the Cuban Missile Crisis, both the United States government and the USSR sought to reduce the tension between the two global superpowers. Khrushchev described the Cuban Missile Crisis as an event where the two most powerful nations had been squared off against each other, each with its finger on the button. 
the two countries resumed negotiations, where JFK hoped that, if we cannot end our differences, he said, at least we can help make the world a safe place for diversity. Eventually, the two nations agreed to ban nuclear weapons testing in space, underwater, and in the atmosphere. Since underground tests were not included in the negotiations, there was not much resistance from the Soviet Union. This pact led to the limited nuclear test ban treaty that was signed in 1963, which brought the world one step closer to the end of the Cold War. Because of JFK's efforts in limiting nuclear weapons, he helped better the relationship between the USSR and the US and helped lead the world towards a complete disarmament, ending the armaments race and a cleaner, less radioactive environment.